Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment down below what you think. This is not a podcast where I just want to be ranting down a camera or doing any of that kind of nonsense. I want to be engaging, talking to people, sharing views and learning things as well. Uh, look, uh, Aston Villa 3, Spartak Trnava, uh, nil. So that's two three nils in a row we've had in pre-season. So I think it's fair to say that Aston Villa are well on course to win the Champions League and the Premier League. And while we're at it, maybe we'll throw in the League Cup and the FA Cup as well. Quadruple, there we go. Easy, done. Um, I'm going down to the bookies right now to put a bet on. Look, I get it. It's Mykonos football, as I call it right now. You might as well be playing on, uh, you know, all the lads that are out there in Mykonos, uh, topping up their tans, um, putting on, you know, the factor. I'd have to put on factor 100 with this, pale Irish skin uh, that sunburns immediately. But, um, you know, uh, you know, most of these lads, Matty Cash, for instance, the tan he's been working up, looking the part, looking the part. So they're, they're out there in Mykonos and pre-season, it feels like Mykonos football. You're still kind of a little bit on the beach, but you're working your way back to serious form. But, um, yeah, uh, I think just a few notes from, from it, just observations. Uh, quickly go over the first half. It, well, well, hilariously, at the start with the atmosphere, the sellout ground, the um, signs that they were, I had at the start, even what seemed like a part of Batmobile in the corner, uh, it kind of felt like a genuine Europa Conference League game, didn't it? Like an early season Conference League game you'd play. Um, so that was quite fun. But uh, no, I mean, I think um, first half was um, incredibly dull, um, just playing it around at the back most of the time. Um, I think that Kostin Adelkovic is a player I've brought up now a couple of times. I talked about him last week and I talked about him about after Warsaw and I'm doing it again now. I think he, look, it's pre-season, it's Mykonos football, but just his his um, profile, uh, he clearly is a very, very athletic guy. He's very tall, he's very rangy, his arms are, you know, sort of, you can imagine him hustling and bustling a player Loves to get forward, clearly. Um, makes underlapping runs, overlapping runs. Likes to knock a ball over the top as well. He did it the other night for Caden Young. He did it tonight, today for um, Leon Bailey. Um, underlapping runs, overlapping runs. Likes to get to the final third and whip in a ball. And we saw one whipped cross he put in today. The keeper ended up coming out to collect it. But actually, it was well placed um, had the Villa player been, out, you know, been able to get there ahead of the keeper. It was so... You know, from the videos I've watched of him, from the sort of scouting I've done of him, I guess, there's a, there's a lot about this guy that looks like a uh, very modern fullback, somebody who likes to get forward and has a lot of kind of um, progressive qualities. And he worked, he linked up nicely the other night. I think it was with Cody Young who played out on the right with him. And he linked up nicely again today with Leon Bailey. And I think, um, of course, you can't judge from pre-season, but um, there's certainly signs and hints there with him of a player that I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, play against higher quality opposition and just seeing how he gets on and seeing how he evolves and develops. He's obviously still so young, he's still a teenager, um, but there's, yeah, it, good signs. And again, like a guy who's got Champions League experience already in his career, who's played regularly at right back for a top team in Serbia in Red Star. So yeah, it, it, you can see he's a player who, has something about him for sure. Uh, and I'm excited to see his development at Villa. Um, otherwise, uh, Enzo Barana chair, a couple of nice touches here and there. Samuel Arlene Jr., the left-hand side of the pitch didn't really, couldn't really get into it. Um, Arlene Jr., one or two touches, had a very nice turn, got away from his player, which then led to the first goal. Um, comes out to Leon Bailey. Uh, Louis Barry with a good overlapping run, takes the defender away, and then Leon Bailey cuts inside and a super finish, lovely stuff. Um, Bailey just doing Leon Bailey things uh, just with the youth players I think Sil Swinkletoes um, and Louis Barry both look like players who have I mean Swinkles particularly looks like he's filled out um, compared to what he did even just a year ago uh, so you know and he, you know, he's nice touches here and there he's got the height for sure and now he looks like he's got the physicality to sort of make the step up into you know um professional men's football uh and i think barry as well looks like he's got quite a bit about him and certainly that stockport loan really must have helped him 
uh, significantly, given the fact that, you know, he had a tough time at Ipswich and uh, MK Dons. And I think if you remember when he went to Ipswich, if you look at him physically when he was there, he he was very light, uh, very young, of course, and shows a good character and mentality to come through those experiences and then go to Stockport. I know it's another step down to League Two from where he was in League One um, before, but uh, he really starred for Stockport, did a fantastic job, scored a couple of great goals for them. And he certainly looks like he's carried that confidence at least into this preseason. And uh, I'll be interested to know, you know, presumably he'll go on loan, as will presumably Sil Swinkles. Um, interested to see where they both go and what sort of level um, the, the loan department think they're both at. And I think uh, Louis Barry, it'd be interesting to know, you know, he's, he was with the champions of League Two last season. Maybe he goes back there in League One. Maybe he's ready to go and step up to that. And then if he does really well in that, they might decide halfway through the season to send him up to the championship. Or maybe they gamble and go with the championship now. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm interested to see how they both do. Presumably, they'll go on loan and presume, see how they do this season, if that's the case. Um, pretty dull first half. Though. Second half, um, so the two standout players, I think, were Ross Barkley and uh, Morgan Rogers. Rogers again, he looks like, you know, with that blonde hair, it's coming in sort of like a, it's a glow up, isn't it? Um, he just carries a certain swagger about him, doesn't he? Um, a real self-assurance and confidence. Uh, he's carrying on the form he showed in the latter stages of last season. He's already showing it now and he's played the second striker role. We've talked about it, haven't we? Um, where is Rogers going to fit this season? Uh, now Musa Diaby looks like he's on his way to Saudi Arabia. Morgan Rogers, um, I've said it a million times on this, on this podcast, he has the physical profile to potentially what well, to be the heir to Watkins and maybe one day become a, a striker, uh, out and out striker. And maybe one day Watkins does move on from Villa and maybe Morgan Rogers is the guy who, in a year or two, might actually be the one to step into that striker's role. Uh, but at the moment, it looks like he's stepping into the second striker role vacated by Diaby. And um, also, you know, if Duran goes, Rogers could potentially be a backup striker as well, though I think we'd probably go to the market for somebody because um, we'd be very light then, wouldn't we? If Ollie Watkins, God forbid, got an injury, we'd have to have someone replace him. And if there's no Duran, there's no real striker. I mean, Cameron Archer might stick around, but you'd think we'd have to get another striker in at least. But Rogers, uh, yeah, he carries that swagger. He has that height. The physicality, but also just the skill set. Um, you know, that uh, you know, there were a couple of passes he made today that even in preseason, you can sometimes just see players who are a level above. And it is just amazing to see how rapidly he's developed since coming in from Middlesbrough when we had our pants pulled down, apparently, uh, according to uh, one leading podcast. And um, you know, uh the ball from Ross Barkley into him from deep was fantastic. And then the touch from Rogers was supreme. They just looked like they had a really nice understanding together by uh Barkley and Rogers. Again, just two high quality players who naturally will have a good understanding against, you know, a pretty poor opposition in Spartak. And um uh, you know, uh, just that touch he took, he then put in a lovely pass to uh Caden Young. Probably should have scored really young, but it, you know. Hits it, keeps saves it, and Rogers is there to score. Um, so what I noticed with him playing in that second striker role, and it was similar against Warsaw, was that more so than maybe Diaby, he's a bit more free roaming. So it sort of pops up all over the pitch, and he's willing to kind of he he looks like he has a bit more physical presence than Diaby in that role. So if you think back to when Rogers scored his first goal for Aston Villa against Brentford, um it was a fantastic goal from the edge of the area. And he's in exact position. You'd imagine second strikers to be, really. And he likes to score goals from, from outside the area, from deep, doesn't he? Uh, Chelsea as well. Uh, that goal he scored against them. The goal he scored for Middlesbrough against Chelsea. Again, cutting inside, outside the area. Great finish from deep. And um, so, yeah, uh, there's certainly a lot there to watch out there for for Rogers. Certainly a lot to think he's got that confident swagger. He's still so young, 21, 22, whatever he is. And um, so, of course, you can't always think he's going to be in great form all the time. He's, he's probably going to fall off, but we shall see. Um, Barkley looked really confident. Very nice to see. Um, 
it's just nice to have him as a squad player, isn't it? Five million quid is absolutely bloody nothing, really. And I don't think he's on big wages from what I've read uh, in media reports. Um, so just to have him as a squad player with his experience and the fact he played so well for Luton last year in that deeper midfield role. You saw today, you know, signs of um, what he can potentially bring. Again, just have to wait and see what happens when we have to play higher level op opposition. But, it, you know, it's nice to think, you know, Nana will come in and be that kind of CDM role most likely. And, you know, beside him, he, he, he might have options of Barkley, Tielemans, and McGinn or um, Enzo Baranachea. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how that all, all develops. And then Cameron Archer, nice goal for him. Um, good that he scored. I remember in preseason last year, he felt like he had loads of near misses and you sort of felt sort of feeling quite sorry for him. Um, but the fact he scored today, great, good. You know, even in preseason, if you're a striker, it gets into your head if you're not scoring goals and the pressure on him, you know, to impress Unai Emery is obviously going to be over his head a bit. So the fact he got a goal was is great. And Morgan Rogers again, playing deep, playing that second striker role, nice link up with the, the striker. Uh Great stuff, great, great ball, from, great, lovely way to pass from from Rogers. Um, and then otherwise, I think Kane Kessler Hayden looked um, looked good, uh, confident. Um, and Lamar Bogard, he has a presence. He certainly looks like a player who can, you know, Nottingham Forest to link with him. Um, you know, so a Premier League club wants him. He certainly looks like a player who could at least uh, get a chance in the Premier League. And who knows, maybe one day, we kick on and do well there. But uh, but yeah, it's amazing to uh, Katie Young as well. Looks like a good young player. So, you know, it's amazing to think Aston Villa's academy is so productive and that a lot of these players will go on to have, you know, solid careers in professional football, whether that's from League Two up to the Championship and even the Premier League. Um, it's great to know that Aston Villa are producing players that we look around the league system and know that a lot of them have come through Aston Villa. Um, so, yeah, um, brilliant. Anyway, yeah, rambled on long enough. Uh, saw the link with Jacob Ramsey and Spurs. Uh, uh, you know G Giovanni Lo Celso I wouldn't rule out that um, Joanne Lang uh, wants him Lang certainly has an interest in him I, I could see that for sure um, he's a quality player he's, he's yeah top quality player There'd certainly be a lot of teams would be interested in, in Ramsey um, I really would not like to see him go at all I think the thought of a front four of a Ramsey, uh, Rogers in second striker, and Ollie Watkins up top, and Leon Bailey, and then to have X Factor players to come in as well, like Phil Jean and um, Ireland Junior. I think that's very exciting. I think to lose Ramsey from that would be pretty gutting, to be honest. But you know, I can see why Lo Celso would be linked. He's, he, he could play that second striker role, I guess. Um, Buendia as well can come in there. But um, uh. You can't rule anything out. You just, you know, you just can't PSR all these sorts of things. But uh, I, I would be more inclined to hope that we don't um, want to lose Ramsey at, this summer, at least. Anyway, uh, I've rambled on long enough. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Pre-season carries on. We're winning the Champions League. We're in the Premier League. Ballon d'Or for uh, Morgan Rogers, uh, young Premier League Player of the Year for um, I don't know Louis Barry. On we go. Up the mighty Villa.